hearts, give you back your homes, or restore your dead to life. But perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. <laughs> Hey everyone, today we're going to answer a few questions that I've received from my last Q&A video. With that said, let's just jump right into it. Here's a good question. The first men cut down all the weirwood trees in the south, and Bran sees through the weirwood net. So how could Bran see what happens in the south if there are no weirwood trees? Bran would have been able to see what happens in the south thousands of years ago when there were weirwood trees, but wouldn't have seen anything south since the first men cut them down. Okay, this is a great question. Since the show is ahead of the books, it's hard to say if the path to growing as a green seer will be revealed or not. It is believed weirwood trees aren't the only thing someone like Bran can link with to experience a vision. Many fans tend to believe the weirwood connection is just a starting point in the training to become the Three-Eyed Raven. However, Bran's training was rushed, so it's possible he doesn't even know the extent at which he can interact with the past. Bran may not have the luxury of many weirwood trees in the south, but he can most likely tap into other objects with links to the past. It's only the weirwoods which the old gods are most connected with on the earth. The further away you are from a weirwood, the harder it is to be connected with the powers associated with them. But it doesn't mean Bran can only see what is within view of a certain tree. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. Why would they want to go to Essos? They were created by the children of the forest to defend Westeros from the first men, not to conquer. This is referring to the idea that the dead army would aim to travel to Essos if they secure Westeros. You're absolutely right, the whole reason they were created in the first place was to defend the lands from the first men who were cutting down their sacred trees. But you have to remember, the first men came from Essos. That's why they are called the First Men. They were the first from Essos who wanted to conquer and claim Westeros. So depending on how you see it, the White Walkers may have a motive to travel east. Anyway, assuming undead Viserion can only be killed by fire or dragonglass, does that make it easier for the other two dragons to kill him, or is he more powerful now? I'm sure Viserion will be more dangerous now that he's flying around with the Night King. So to me, it might be more difficult for the other two dragons to take him out. And I know that we are speculating what weapons would work best to feeding an undead dragon, but for some reason I feel like however it's done, it will be in an unexpected fashion. Not just shooting it full of arrows made of dragon glass, but something more epic. I just have that feeling. I have a question about the Ice family sword of Starks. Could it be originally a White Walker sword like in the show? Maybe Starks lost the original ice, the magical sword, and then find a Valyrian sword and named it as ice. What do you think? Maybe another thing that kills the others is their own swords. Well, ice has been in the Stark family for generations, and the White Walkers last came out around 8 to 10,000 years ago. If the first Stark sword was taken from a defeated White Walker, it must have been Brandon the Builder, the founder of the Stark house. And by most accounts, Brandon the Builder was a cripple in a wheelchair, so probably not the kind of guy swinging around a White Walker weapon. I do believe Ice could be named as a weapon that is known to handle the evil that comes with Winter, because of its Valyrian steel makeup. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. As always, thank you for watching, have a great day, take care, and I will see you soon.